Well guys, we have ourselves a new car for no oil changes. Now this right here, I believe is a 2.4 liter Ecotec non-turbo engine. These are getting to be very common engines inside your Chevy Equinoxes, uh, your Cruises. Uh, this one right here is a Buick, I don't even know how to say the name, Verlano. Uh, Honestly guys, I don't think this one would be a great derby car. It's got some cast suspension and like a solid trailing arm like Cavaliers, but then it's got weird links back here. Maybe that would help with like a half-ass subframe. I, I don't know. Maybe it might be a good figure eight car. It was very peppy, um, but we need to find out how long these things will last without motor oil because guys in the derby ring there's going to be a little bit of oil starvation and you never really know or if you just want to blow your shit up we can run it without oil this one does not have an alternator oh look at that nice pair of glasses right there i'm gonna take those so we do have this thing set up we're just charging it up right now so what happens is, is once it starts running i'll probably put it on V, uh, 12 volt low or 12 volt medium just so then that way it has a charge because I do not want the alternator to be the reason why this thing dies. But before we do that we need to discuss the winner of last week's no oil time. Now I haven't actually posted the video yet so I don't know who the winner is but I can tell you guys the time. So if you guys guessed the closest to the time you guys can let me know. Let's go find out the time of last week's Dodge Caliper no oil test. So I have not posted the video, so I have not guessed the right time. You know what guys, if you guess this time, I will be commenting on your comment asking if you to PM me on Facebook so I can send you your prize. Free shipping right to your door, a Hot Wheels car right to your door. So the Dodge Caliper, where do you guys think it ended up? So it looks like Chevy Aveo is the worst one so far at 11 minutes 8 seconds. And Subaru Forester, which I surprised me, five hours twenty three minutes, because I've actually, I've actually found recent luck with the Subarus. Where do you think it ends up? Mm, the time is fifty six minutes twenty three seconds, so it fits right above the Grand Prix. I believe the Grand Prix had like a three point six liter or three point nine liter, or maybe even a three eight. I don't know. I should start writing this stuff down. What's on there? But it's just above the, just under the 5.3 by about 38, 39 minutes. So I actually think if you take a look, that Dodge Caliper falls right in the middle of our boards, right smack dab in the middle. So as of right now, it's pretty good. But the SFI Cavalier is three hours. So unfortunately, Cavaliers do have your Dodge Calipers built beat without oil. So if you guessed 57 minutes, be expecting a comment from me guys on last week's video on no oil times. Well, let's go run this Buick out of oil. I gave up on the park and just slammed it into neutral. So we have the car running. What's that sound? Well, that's a bit terrifying. Maybe we are gonna have to do park. Okay, we are in park. Every car has been in park, so this one should be in park so that we have the same status quo for every car. This thing says it has a full tank of gas, it just needs a boost. So we have the boost going on it. That is a healthy sounding engine. What's that say? Engine. Engine overspeed. So this one here might have like sensors to stop it from running without any engine oil in it. I'm not 100% sure, but I need to break out my phone here, get the timer all ready. So let's start draining the oil. Oh, that's not a good sign. Doesn't look like there's a whole lot in there. Start the timer. Now we're gonna keep watching this thing and seeing how she's going. So this one here might have a little bit of an advantage. It really wasn't spitting out any oil until I actually pulled the oil fill cap. As soon as I pulled the oil fill cap, look at the oil running out of there now. So we'll have to pay attention. I think this one's got a lot of electronic sensors into it, so it might actually have a, oh my goodness. 
Oh my goodness, this thing does not like it without the oil. I wonder if this one's like direct injected. Wow. It's not even empty yet. Oh my goodness. This thing sounds very, very unhappy. But it's still running. It's starting to come up the temp. I see some steam on these upper hoses. Oh, there's still oil coming out of it. Maybe that way it has no alternator, it has no belt. This thing sounds so bad. If you guys go to the tailgate, it's not, sorry, the tailpipe, it sounds like it has a huge camp, but it's mostly just slowly dying. We drained all the oil out. I smoothed the oil in the tank. I think something just broke. We are about, uh, uh, we're gonna say, not that long into the test, and the loud rattle went away, and now it's a much more quieter, calmer rattle. So I don't know if that's good or bad, but the sound dramatically changed there. It went from a loud rattle. You can hear the difference from the previous video to now. But maybe it got better. Maybe it was something to do with uh, the oil pump was not happy. Maybe it just gave out. There is no serpentine belt on this, so it's also not moving the coolant around, but it is a very cold, rainy, icy day, and the engine is covered nice, so not really sure how that's gonna work. But, sounded better. So the car just turned off. Unfortunately, I have the camera off. So we're just gonna crank this thing up to start just to make sure that we have the proper thing. It was running, there was no weird noises. It just turned off and the headlights turned off and everything. So I kind of think it may have suffered a feat. Let's see if she starts up. Remember guys, she gets a couple good tries to, to restart. Okay, so that time was no good. Charger's still on. So 
it says that the battery's dropping right down. I know the battery and it's no good. So I'm gonna try to throw another booster pack on it and see if it refires. So she gets two more restarts, and after that, then it's done. So it restarted now, so we restarted the timer. And then after the second restart, if she fires, then it's right to the floor to try to see how long she'll last. So she's still going. Still sounds just like it did. It actually sounds better now than at the beginning. Guys, she just stopped again. Let's see if she'll start. This is her last restart. After this one, if she, if she dies after this one, then it's red line. So I did stop the timer. Okay guys, I've stopped the timer. That's the third stall on friendly time. Now it is unfriendly time. sounded like it right there. Let's stop the timer. So we've only added an extra minute and a half from the unfriendly. I think I think that's it, boys and girls. I think she's done. I think she's done. Let's pull the oil fill cap. Oh yeah, buddy. I I think she's cooked. What time do you think she ended up at, guys? We're going to leave some comments, and you guys can pick the winner. So we're going to go do some math and see what time she ends up at. Now that we got the car ready for scrap, we basically had to pull the engine on this to get the catalytic off. We got the gas drained. We drained the transmission oil while we're at it. I really wish the scrap yard would give me a better rate if I bring in an engine without any oil in it because then it's less stuff for them to do. They save about 30 minutes per car, but nope, don't give you a better rate, which kind of sucks. We did fill up the interior with a little bit more stuff, pulled the battery, car's ready for scrap. So this is what they look like after they die of running with no oil. They're just pretty much ready for the yard. But let's go see what the time is. I can't tell you what it is though. So I had to go in the house and get changed because I was soaked from doing that. But I got my rubber boots on now. I got a mildly clean sweater on. But we have this 2000, eh, oh my goodness, 2012 Buick. Where do you guys think it's going to end up? Underneath the Subaru? Oh my god, these are on there good. Underneath the S10, underneath the SFI Cavalier. What about right here underneath the Avalanche? by the Dodge Avenger, Grand Prix, Cobalt, Ranger. So my theory on this Buick is it kind of replaced the Cobalt, so I kind of want to think down here. But it also is kind of a direct competitor with the Caliper in the kind of same bracket. And that's a 2.4 and the Caliper was a 2.4. The SFI Cavalier, come on guys, that's like a legend in the derby community. You can run those things without water for years. The S10's truck Subaru, Subaru's kind of an oddball. Nothing's really, 
I don't think the Subaru is going to be dethroned for a while unless they get like a motor designed to run without oil. But where do you guys think this is going to end up? I really did think the Ford Ranger was going to be a lot higher. But leave your comments on where you below, uh, where you think below. And congratulations on whoever guessed around 56 minutes. It doesn't matter if you're over or under. The closest one to 56 minutes wins for last week. I have not picked the winner, but because I haven't put up the video. But the winner will be picked in the comments. And I will get you to PM me on Messenger on Facebook so I can get you guys your Hot Wheels prize. But leave your comments down below on where you think the 2012 Buick with the 2.4 is going to end up on the list. Take care, guys. We'll see you back here next week. Don't forget to comment within the next seven days to find out where this Buick ends up. Thanks for watching, guys. See you back here later on Zach's Workshop.